Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I want to uh, do a video dedicated to the connecting and disconnecting or hitching and unhitching using this particular hitch. This is an ET hitch engineered and manufactured uh, by a fellow Henry Schmidt, really, really smart man in Florida. This hitch in total weighs 750 pounds. This model is engineered to pull a 30,000 pound trailer with up to a 7 thousand pound pin weight. There's a model as well that goes higher towards a 40,000 pound trailer and 10,000 pounds of pin weight. What's unique about this hitch is it utilizes four airbags underneath this hitch to provide the proper ride that we require with our heavy duty trucks. And it does a fabulous job. Uh, this is the only hitch that I will put now on my RV haulers. It's the only one that I believe has the proper ride to treat our beautiful trailers the way they should be treated and also the safety and engineering behind it. <coughs> this hitch is also, Henry hasn't scrimped on a thing. If you look at the components that go into this hitch, everything is of the really superior quality and uh, it's the only hitch that I believe in. I think I've said that a few times now. But what I want to show you is, you do not connect and disconnect as you would a traditional hitch that you might have in your pickup truck. Because this is an air ride hitch, this hitch has a leveling valve, it's right over here. No matter how much weight we put on the head of this hitch, it will that leveling valve will always bring this hitch to the proper ride height. As a result, it does some unique things. And uh, we're going to connect a trailer and disconnect a trailer and I'm going to show you the one important thing which is to establish a little gap between this hitch, uh, the plate of your trailer and this hitch head when you disconnect and when you connect. Let's go do that on a real truck. No. Let me take you through the hitching process now utilizing that Air Ride ET Senior Hitch and our RV hauler. If possible Really try to get your truck and your trailer as parallel as possible. Don't be coming into your hitch at an angle because it's very hard to, uh, well, to get the jaw to line up with the pin. Something that really helps with the hitching process is to utilize one of these cameras. It gives you a straight on view of the hitch and the orientation of the trailer. Something I would recommend you do is paint a white stripe down the front of your trailer, pin box, and also on the hitch. Now, this hitch is going to be going to a customer, and I'm going to let him, if he wishes, paint that white line. He can paint whatever width he wants. So to illustrate, I'm going to use a piece of tape. Do get it right in the middle, and if you can, also paint the white line over the handle a little bit too. I'll take you inside the truck and show you what we see from the camera. We're here inside the truck and we're looking at the camera display on the dash and you can really see the white line on the hitch versus the white line on the trailer. When you are out even half an inch it's very obvious as you back up whether you're aligned or not. And this is what you want to see from behind the pin. You can see that that pin is lined up perfectly with the jaws. We're going to bring the truck back a little bit closer and then set our proper height to come back in and lock around that pin. To prepare the hitch for connection to the trailer, push the handle forward just a little bit, pull this pin out to release it, and the handle will come back and that when it's it's pretty well 90 degrees to the trailer you'll see that when the pin comes into this hitch this handle will come back and this pin will lock in front of it what we want to do next is our hitch is prepared for connection we're quite we're well lined up in line with the trailer we want to bring this hitch just close to the front of the uh, trailer and we're going to set the trailer height so that it slides in nicely. Now 
Now having a spotter to help you do this is great, but you can do it by yourself. That camera gives you a fantastic view of what's going on. Come around underneath the trailer. We want this plate to just barely be above the head. So you actually want a little bit of movement, which we have. That looks right. And if you come around from the back, again, your spotter is great to have helping you do this. If you come straight on, you'll see that this pin is heading straight into those jaws in behind. And you can see from this angle that the plate is just floating above the surface of the head. So now we're ready to hitch up the final stage. I'm going to back the truck up and what you're going to look for is to have those jaws completely close around the back of the pin. Evan will record it for you while I back up. So you can see from this angle, the handle has pushed back against the head and we also confirm that this little pin is in front of the handle. You'll see this can't go forward anymore. It's locked in place. Now we're going to do a tug test to make sure that we really are connected. So for this tug, tug test, we want to have our trailer connected. And while I'm at it, I will also connect my breakaway. Now a small point, um, Henry, the inventor of these hitches, has now created a small point for us to connect these at the back of the hitch. This one doesn't have it yet. Hooking up our breakaway can be done there. For our tug test, we want to create about a one or a, perhaps a two inch gap between our legs and the ground so that when we pull forward, these aren't going to have a chance of binding or dragging on the ground. Remember to take your chalks out for this. For the tug test, what we want to do is manually apply our brake controller, put the truck in gear, and try to pull forward just a little bit. Uh, you can have a spotter back here, or maybe you can tell from the cab, but you should be able to feel the trailer grabbing and even dragging a tiny bit on the ground. Well, I didn't necessarily skid it across the ground, but you could obviously tell that Dusty here, this 2015 Volvo, was pretty, pulling pretty hard on that trailer. My trailer is equipped with electric over hydraulic disc brakes, so I got some pretty good braking power. And I got eight wheels in contact with the ground. It's pretty tough to skid it. So lift your legs, make sure they're in the stowed position. Then we're going to check our lights on the trailer for left, right, marker, brake. And if you're so equipped, it's nice to see if your uh, backup lights are working as well. Now that we have our trailer That's a take two, Evan. Take two. <laughs> now that we have our trailer connected, let me show you how to disconnect it. Remember, this is a very unique hitch, the ET hitch, and there's a couple little things that you want to watch for. But first, let's chalk our wheels.
what we're looking to do is re-establish that tiny gap between the head and the pin box again. In other words, we want to lift the pressure off of the truck and off of the airbags of the hitch. That way we're free to drive out and there's no friction between the truck and the trailer. What you're going to start to hear here is the hitch leveling valve is starting to vent the air. So we wait for the hissing to stop. While I'm waiting, I'll unhook my breakaway cable. And again, we're looking to find a very small gap between the head and the pin box plate. If you were to try to drive away, right now. There's so much pressure on this plate. As you drive away, you would successfully do so, but this hitch will just go bang. It will uh, bounce up to the top. So you can see there's a very small gap in here that just appeared. But again, we want to wait until all that hissing is done to make sure that there's no pressure either upwards on this hitch or downwards. It should be a free drive out. To prepare the hitch to drive away, we need to pull this pin and push forward on this arm. You'll see that we, you, you'll always have a little bit of motion. Uh, this hitch hasn't sprung up or sprung down. We're free to drive ahead. So that arm is forward. Both of our, both our uh, breakaway cable as well as our trailer plug has been disconnected and I'll drive ahead. I've got a safety uh, note about these hitches. One of the things that I think everybody should be careful about is anytime you have a trailer connected and you've been away from your truck and trailer for any period of time, say you've stopped at a rest stop or a truck stop, fueled up, always come back to your hitch and make sure that nobody is monkeyed with it. Nobody's pulled that pin and that when you drive away your trailer's not going to drop. I'm going to share with you a bit of a warning. Uh, when people stop for the evening with these trucks, I always train my customers never put your legs down on the trailer unless you unhitch from the truck. And the reason is, all of these trucks lose air. They're, they're, they've got air ride on the back, they've got air bags on the back axle. And over time, every truck will lose its air and this truck will settle down towards the ground. What happens when our trucks lose air is this rear axle, actually the truck rolls forward. Yeah, think about that. You've got your parking brake on. You lose air in this truck and you will see this truck roll forward. Think about what happens. It's, perhaps it's overnight, you've stopped in a Walmart, but you put your legs down on the trailer because you want to be nice and steady and you've left it connected to the truck. Imagine if those two legs were down and a truck rolls forward. What happens to those legs? They bend, they break, they get wrecked. And I'm going to illustrate this for you. I'm going to simulate this truck losing air overnight. Now I've got a switch on the dash that allows me to exhaust the air in these rear airbags. And I've put a piece of tape on the ground and a piece of tape on this tire. And what Evan is going to show you is as we lose air, the truck's going to roll forward. So this truck rolled forward a good probably three or four inches and imagine what that would do to your trailer. Um, this truck is so heavy back here it will definitely wreck or, uh, or 
or certainly bend the legs if you had them down overnight. So the answer to this is either empty your air tanks, so force it to do this, or disconnect from the hitch. It's pretty quick. Pull that, pull that lever, drive ahead. You just have to be ahead, eight, 10 inches, let the truck do its settling, and in the morning, when you air back up, you're, it's a straight run back into that pin. You're all lined up to go and ready to go. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions about what we've done here today or any comments or suggestions or improvements, please share them in the comments section. Our website is www.rvhaulers.ca. I love this hitch and this is the only hitch you should put on a heavy duty truck. An ET hitch from ET Hitches in Florida. Thanks for watching.